Oh, look, there it is. Oh, is that that pink yeah, flash? Like the lilac flash, that's where the potassium is being produced and it's reacting straight away. And that's, the, that's the potassium on the surface and it's just burning quickly in, 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 in oxygen. There's another one, look. But yes, it's reacting yeah, away. It's just like a, a tiny pink matchstick popping on the surface. Yeah, exactly. And that sort of, that sort of noise, almost like a match flare, is, is the potassium flaring off. Wow, that's, and that's, that's what you would have seen. That's what you would have seen, just there and then. Beautiful lilac flame. Where others had failed, Davy succeeded. So let's start off with a generic electrolysis setup. A couple of electrodes, a power supply, DC, and a container. For in this case, the solid sodium chloride. Well, there are two reasons why this won't undergo electrolysis. The first is, is that solid sodium chloride will not conduct electricity. In order for it to conduct, in SL at least, you have to melt it, turn it into a liquid by heating it up. This frees the ions up to move around. Solid sodium chloride is an insulator, whereas liquid sodium chloride is a conductor. And the reason for that, well, I always think FMCP, freely moving charged particles. Anything that conducts electricity has freely moving charged particles. So, of course, when you melt it, you're freeing up these ions to move around and it becomes a conductor. Now, notice how after I've closed the switch, which was the second problem, the electrons are shuffling towards the negative electrode. Now that seems odd. Electrons don't want to go to where something negative is. They repel. But a battery puts the electrons where they don't want to go. So the battery is pushing the electrons and piling them up on the negative electrode. Normally they wouldn't want to go there, but the battery forces them to go there. Some terminology. The positive electrode is the anode, and the negative electrode is the cathode. Notice how the ions in the melted salt uh, by electrostatic attraction go towards the opposite charged electrode. The positives attract the negative, the negatives attract the positive. Looking at the sodium ion, that pulls an electron off of the cathode. After all, the cathode is full of electrons. And turns into liquid sodium. And that's reduction. Reduction is gain of electrons, oil rig. And this liquid sodium now sinks to the bottom of the container, where it can be collected. Two of the chloride ions attracted to the anode are then going to have their electrons ripped off. After all, the anode is positive. It's going to attract the electrons off of the chloride, leaving behind diatomic chlorine. The IB like to ask, what do you see? You don't see chlorine. You see a green gas being evolved. And to write out the equation, you're going to have to lose an electron off of chloride, but you have to end up with Cl2. So make sure you account for the fact that there are two chlorides undergoing oxidation. Oxidation is loss of electrons, oil rig. And I've just rearranged it there. Uh, it's the same thing. Both equations are suitable. And so the electrons are pushed around the circuit. Sodium ions pull them off of the cathode and chloride ions put them on at the anode. So oxidation at the anode, reduction at the cathode. Don't learn this. Work it out from first principles. Freeze up more space in your brain. I don't learn these things. I just try to work them out quickly at the board. Now notice the top equation has one electron, whereas the bottom equation has two electrons. And if I want to combine them, I have to balance the electrons. And I'm going to do that by doubling the top equation. Now I've got two electrons there as well. Cancel them out and add up those two half equations to make the full equation. So why would you ever want to do this? Well, I want to make sodium and chlorine from sodium chloride. For some reason, the IB loves this question. What are the charge carriers? Two points. Well, in the wires, you can see that the charge is carried by the electrons. The wires are conductors. Electrons can pass through them without being changed. 
But what are the charge carriers in the electrolyte? Well, that's the ions. The ions are moving around and allowing the circuit to be completed. Sodium pulling off electrons here, chloride putting on electrons there. And an electrolyte is changed by this passage of electricity. All right, so what's wrong with this setup? Pause the video and find all the mistakes. Okay, first off, I cheekily switched the battery round. So you're gonna to have to switch those anode and cathodes. Then, then close the switch. Seems petty, but I seem to remember the IB playing that trick years ago. It's lead 2 bromide because look at the charge on the lead iron, not lead 4. Bromine's going to be a gas because it's really, really hot. You've melted this stuff. And bromide is going to be a liquid. Halide ions are liquids in this situation. And the lead is also going to be a liquid. Lead melts at these high temperatures. Not going to be a solid. Tricky, eh? 